P.J. Fleck is not only one of the most iconic coaches in college football, but he is also one of the brightest. Row the boat has become his famous catchphrase, and he has Minnesota football on the rise. There is a ton you can say about Fleck, from his iconic suit, to his sunglasses, and his bald head, but who is this guy, and how did he become one of college football's brightest young coaches? In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the rise of P.J. Fleck, his legendary run at Western Michigan, and how he's slowly turning Minnesota into a Big Ten power. I'm also happy to say that Harris Highlights will be joining me for today's video, so be sure to check out his channel if you haven't already. How's it going everyone? Harris Highlights here. Now make sure you guys click that subscribe button and help Scott reach 10,000 subscribers. Also give this video a thumbs up and drop a comment down below and interact with him in the comments. Last year, Minnesota broke out and became one of the big surprises of the 2019 college football season. They ended up going 11-2 last year and were only one win away from representing the West in the Big Ten Championship. Because Minnesota football has been lackluster this decade, many fans probably think they are a mediocre program, but historically, they are actually one of the all-time winningest schools. The Golden Gophers have six national championships, but they all came before 1960. Back then, Minnesota had one of the better offenses and used to basically only run the ball. They came up with the famous Minnesota Shift, a move that would happen right before a snap to keep defenses off balance. The move was very successful and schools such as Yale adopted it. The Gophers have had a ton of legendary coaches, starting with Henry Williams. He has the highest winning percentage in school history and he is now in the College Football Hall of Fame. After the Williams era, the next big name was Bernie Bierman. Bernie played in Minnesota, and he coached in Mississippi State and Tulane before coming back to coach the Gophers. While there, he won three national titles in his first 11 seasons, but after that he really fell off and eventually left. Finally, they played under Murray Warmath. Murray played college football at Tennessee under Robert Neeland, and he ended up coaching in Mississippi State before he came to the Gophers. While there, he led them to two Rose Bowls and a national title. Since him, the Gophers have had coaches such as Cal Stoll, Glenn Mason, and Jerry Kill, but none of them have led them back to their glory days. Sadly, most college football fans have have literally no idea that Minnesota was once good at football, but their new head coach is trying to change that. After Jerry Kill retired midway through the 2015 season due to health concerns, they had to find a new head coach, and they eventually settled on the up-and-coming P.J. Fleck. He was one of the top coaching candidates in the country, so Gopher fans were really happy with what they got. But before we get started with the Fleck era, let's go back in time and learn about how P.J. Fleck became what he was. P.J. Fleck was born in Sugar Grove, Illinois, and he was a three-sport athlete growing up. He was really good at both track and basketball, but his best sport was football. He set a then state record 95 catches his senior year and caught 199 passes for 3,121 yards and 34 touchdowns by the time he had left Caneland High School. He wasn't good enough to play Power 5 college football, but he was good enough for Northern Illinois. While there, he became a star, as by the time he was a senior, he had caught 77 passes for 1,028 yards and 6 touchdowns. His 77 receptions still rank second all-time in school history, and he is near the top in punt returns, punt return yards, receptions, and receiving yards. He was also super smart as he was a second team academic All-American as a senior. After his Northern Illinois days, he was actually good enough to make it to the NFL as the San Francisco 49ers actually signed him as an undrafted free agent. He spent most of his 2004 season on the practice squad, but he did appear in the final regular season game. In 2005, he spent the whole year on the injured reserve list, and he was actually released from the team. Then 49ers head coach Mike Nolan knew PJ had a future in coaching, and immediately offered him a spot on the staff. Fleck wasn't ready to give up on football just yet though, as he was going to try and make it with his hometown team, the Chicago Bears. But after failing a physical, PJ knew it was time to take up coaching. Fleck got his first coaching gig in the college football world as he was offered a spot on the Ohio State coaching staff by legendary coach Jim Trussell. While he was there, he worked with the tight ends and also helped out in special teams. He helped the Buckeyes stay ranked number one for most of the season, and they eventually got to the national championship where they ultimately lost to Florida. Going into 2007, he returned to his alma mater, Northern Illinois, and he became a wide receivers coach there. Following Joe Novak's retirement, Jerry Kill came in to become the next head coach in Northern Illinois, and he retained Fleck to be their receivers coach and was named the recruiting coordinator. After after one more year there, he was hired by Greg Schiano to be the wide receivers coach at Rutgers. After a year there, Fleck was hired by Northern Illinois to become their next offensive coordinator. After just a few days there, he determined that he wasn't ready to become an offensive coordinator and decided to follow Greg Schiano to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers where he was their wide receivers coach. After one year there, Western Michigan decided to take a gamble and hire Fleck, making him the youngest head coach in college football at the time. In 2014, the Broncos went 8-4 with close losses against Purdue, Virginia Tech, and Toledo. 
After losing to Air Force in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, Fleck won the 2014 MAC Coach of the Year, and believe it or not, former Michigan star running back Mike Harrick was on the team's staff. Going into 2015, the Broncos lost three of their first four games to Michigan State, Georgia Southern, and Ohio State, but they won five of their next seven games, including a huge road win against number 24 Toledo. It wasn't enough to get them to the MAC Championship, as they lost on the road to Northern Illinois in their final regular season game. They ended up getting to the Bahamas Bowl, and they played and beat Middle Tennessee State. Going into 2000. 16, this was supposed to be the breakout year for the Broncos as they were picked to win the MAC. They opened up the season under the national spotlight with a game against Northwestern. In an absolute thriller, the Broncos beat Northwestern after they recovered a late fumble. This was the biggest win of the Fleck era already, and it was only week one. Next up, they had another game against another Big Ten team, and it was Illinois. The Broncos dominated from the very beginning and beat the Illini 34-10. After that, they beat Georgia Southern, Central Michigan, and Northern Illinois to improve to 7-0, and they were ranked number 24 in the country. This marked the first time in program history that the Broncos were ranked. From there, they kept cruising and beat Eastern Michigan, Ball State, and Kent State before a huge showdown with Buffalo. Corey Davis had become one of the best wide receivers in college football, and the Broncos were the Cinderella team of the 2016 season, and College Game Day decided to come to Kalamazoo for their matchup with Buffalo. I remember that College Game Day show vividly, and it was a really cold November morning, and it was snowing. After their win against Buffalo, Fleck had the Broncos on top of the college football world, and row the boat was becoming a household phrase. After beating Toledo, the Broncos were 12-0 and made the MAC championship game. Once there, they survived a close game and finished with a 13-0 record. Since they were college football's best group of five team, they got a bid to play in the Cotton Bowl and were matched up against number 8 Wisconsin. In one of the best bowl games of the year, Wisconsin escaped and won 24-16. The Broncos would end up going 13-1 on the season, and had one of the best years of a group of five team has ever had. DJ Fleck was a hot commodity on the coaching market, he was a finalist for the Coach of the Year award, and many people thought he was going to leave Kalamazoo for a bigger and better job. Fleck heard from schools such as Rutgers, Syracuse, Purdue, and Cincinnati, but he declined to interview with them because he wanted a better job. Minnesota interim head coach Tracy Clays actually did okay, but the school thought they could do better, and they extended an offer to Fleck. PJ took the job, and he was the new head coach for the Golden Gophers. Not everyone was a fan of the hire, though. Former coach Jerry Kill helped Fleck at the job at Western Michigan, and he felt that PJ was all about himself and that he treated Kill's players like they were bad and inferior. They apparently talked once, but they said they weren't planning on talking ever again. Minnesota was going to struggle as they didn't really have a quarterback or a strong receiving core. The quarterback battle came down to Demry Croft and Connor Rhoda, and both guys saw the field. Rodney Smith was the team's running back, and Tyler Johnson was the best wide receiver on the roster. They started out 3 with wins over Buffalo, Middle Tennessee, and Oregon State, but that was the highlight of their season as they would only win two more games against Nebraska and Illinois before losing to Wisconsin to finish the season at 5-7. and seven. Given the roster and the schedule, I think it was okay that Fleck did make a bowl in his first year, but expectations were going to rise in his second year. Going into 2018, Minnesota had Tanner Morgan, an up-and-coming quarterback, and Zach Anikstead, a quarterback who had gotten praise from Baker Mayfield, so that position was going to be much improved. They returned Rodney Smith, and freshman Mohamed Ibrahim broke out, and Tyler Johnson, Rashad Bateman, and Chris Ottman Bell were a strong core of wide receivers. The Gophers once again began the season 3-0 with wins over New Mexico State, Fresno State, and Miami of Ohio. But just like last year, they hit a wall. They lost their next four games to Maryland, Ohio State, Iowa, and Nebraska, and they looked non-competitive in all four of those games. After a thrilling win against Indiana, the Gophers only had to win two of their last four games to reach a bowl, and their schedule included Purdue and Illinois. They ended up getting throttled by Illinois, and after that game, Fleck fired Rob Smith, their defensive coordinator. From there, they beat Purdue in a blizzard game, and then took down Wisconsin on the road in the rivalry matchups. They ended up going 6-6, six and, six and made the quick lane bowl against Georgia Tech. They beat the Yellow Jackets pretty easily, and finished the season at 7-6. and six. In a season where it looked like they were dead in the water, Fleck got the team back on track, and they finished with a ton of momentum going into the 2019 season. Going into 2019, Tanner Morgan was the full-fledged starter. Rodney Smith, Muhammad Ibrahim, and Shannon Brooks were back at running back, and Tyler Johnson and Rashad Bateman were ready to break out in the stars. On the defensive side of the ball, the Gophers returned potentially All-American safety Antoine Winfield Jr. and future NFL linebacker Kamal Martin. They actually began the season picked to finish 6th in the Big Ten West. 
The West was expected to have a breakout season, and everyone except for Illinois had a chance to win the division. Through the first three games, the Gophers played like the sixth best team in their division, as they only beat FCS South Dakota State by a touchdown, won a miracle double overtime game against Fresno State, and then beat Georgia Southern by only three points. To this point, Minnesota looked terrible, but they were still undefeated. In their next game against Purdue, the Boilermakers lost star quarterback Elijah Sindelar and Heisman candidate wide receiver Rondell Moore to injury on the same play. Purdue came back, but Min they continued to roll once they entered the AP poll as they killed Rutgers in Maryland. Going into their huge game against number 4 Penn State, it finally looked like the number 17 ranked Gophers had found their stride. In what was personally one of my favorite games of the 2019 season, Minnesota controlled the game and made a late interception to reach 9-0 for the first time in over 50 years. They jumped all the way up to number 8 in the country, but they lost a heartbreaker on the road to number 20 Iowa the following week. After a win over Northwestern, they were set to face number 12 Wisconsin in a winner-take-all rivalry matchup for the Big Ten West. Wisconsin blew the rails off of Minnesota, and the Gophers weren't going to be able to play in the Big Ten Championship. They did, however, get to play number 12 Auburn in the Outback Bowl, and Minnesota ended the year on a high note with a 31-24 win over the Tigers. This was a super thrilling and historic season for Minnesota, and it all started with P.J. Fleck. Tyler Johnson and Antoine Winfield will likely do well in the NFL, and I am rooting for their success. Tanner Morgan and Rashad Bateman are one of the best quarterback wide receiver duos in college football, and I expect Minnesota football to compete at a high level next year. Currently, they're ranked number 25 in the country, and they start play in two weeks against Michigan. Alright guys, that's all for me on my end. Again, if you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button and help Scott reach 10,000 subscribers. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and drop a comment on what your thoughts are with Minnesota and what your expectations are for them in the 2020 college football season. Overall, I think at times PJ Fleck comes across as a selfish or annoying dude, but I think he is a good guy deep down and he wants best and he wants what's best for his team and his players. Before doing this video, I had no idea that Minnesota used to be really good at football, and it'd be really cool to see them get back to that level of play again. I think Fleck will continue to build Minnesota into a conference contender and maybe even get them to the playoff at some point. But I also think that he will take a bigger job or maybe even make the jump to the NFL when it's all said and done. Overall, I really enjoyed making today's video. And if you enjoyed watching it, please be sure to hit that like button as this took me hours to write and edit and I appreciate every single like you guys give me. I hope you guys enjoyed Harris Highlights joining us for today's video and thank you Blake for coming on for this one. If you are new and love college football, I make videos like this and I have tons of stuff coming in the near future so be sure to subscribe. If you are still here, check out all my other videos like this and until next time, peace.